Hey guys, it's Alex here, and today I'm gonna to go into a proper deep dive on the differences between the GHL KH Director and the Refactory KH Keeper. Now I was given the KH Keeper for free, whereas I paid for the KH Director with my own money. But the deal with Refactory was that I make one video giving my honest thoughts, and I've already done that, so I'll put a card up to there. So as far as I'm concerned, this is not a video for Refactory, it's a video for you guys. Now the only thing I can't tell you about with these devices is controlling alkalinity. With the KH Director, I never got to the stage where I was quite comfortable enough handing over the keys to my alkalinity. And with the Refactory device, the functionality only became available on the day I was recording recording all of this footage, so I've not had a chance to play around with it as yet. Anyway, no more messing around, let's get stuck in. So in the blue corner then we have the GHL KH Director, and in the yellow corner we have the Refactory KH Keeper. Now this is going to be a slightly unbalanced test, because I've had the KH Director for nine months, and I've only had the KH Keeper for about three weeks, but I am going to be selling the KH Director soon, so I'm going to get this done whilst I've still got it. I'm going to break this down into three categories, price, hardware and software, and we'll kick straight off with price, which is a win straight off the bat for the KH Keeper. In the UK, the KH Keeper costs £570, and the GHL KH Director costs £815. Now, if you already have a Profilux controller, you need a slightly cheaper dosing pump for the GHL KH Director, and that will save you 50 quid. But either way, the KH Keeper is around 200 to 250 pounds cheaper to buy and set up in the first place than the KH Director. But there are also running costs to be considered. So you need to buy reagent to keep going, and you also need to replace the pH probes every now and then. You probably need to replace the pH probe once a year, so I'm gonna assume that's the case for both of these for the purposes of this test. But first off, what about reagent? Well, the KH Keeper reagent comes in a one litre bottle that you need to dilute to make 10 litres. That costs 49 pounds, and according to what Refactory say, that 10 litres should be good for around 1,428 tests. All of which means it will cost you about three and a half pence per test for the Refactory KH Keeper. The KH Director, alternatively, you don't need to dilute. You buy a one litre bottle and it costs you around £32.50. And according to the GHL website, you should get around 360 tests out of that one litre bottle. So by my math, that works out at around nine pence per test. Now it's entirely possible that those sums aren't gonna be exactly right, but they're probably roughly in the right kind of ballpark. And basically the long and the short of it is, the KH Keeper is significantly cheaper to run than the KH Director in terms of reagent. Also when it comes to the pH probe, the pH probe for the KH Keeper is 39 pounds, whereas it is around 72 pounds on the KH Director. Now you do tend to get what you pay for in life, so you might find that the pH probe lasts a little bit longer on the KH Director than it does the KH Keeper. And if that's the case, the cost will roughly level out, but for sure the KH Keeper is cheaper in terms of purchasing and reagents. And that segues nicely onto hardware. Now there are reasons that the KH Keeper is cheaper and there are certain things that you don't get with it that you do get with the KH Director that explain why it is a little bit cheaper. For a start, with the KH Director, it comes with four dosing heads. Now it needs three dosing heads to do its stuff, which means you have one spare dosing head. Whereas on the KH Keeper, it only has three heads, which is all it needs to do to make the tests. But that does mean you'll need to buy an extra dosing pump if you want it to control alkalinity as well. Although on that point, I would say that the chances are you're gonna need more than one dosing head to control your alkalinity. Realistically, if your alkalinity consumption is gonna change, then your calcium consumption is gonna to change too. So there's no point in my mind changing alkalinity dosing unless you're gonna do the calcium too. So you're probably gonna to need to buy more dosing heads no matter which option you go for. The KH Director also uses all stepper motors. So all four of these are the high precision stepper motors, whereas in the KH Keeper, it uses two of the cheaper, lower accuracy pumps and one of the stepper motors to control the reagent. Now it has to use the precise stepper motor to control the reagent because it needs to drop in tiny little amounts, but it doesn't need to be quite so accurate when it's adding and removing the water sample. So that's part of where you get the savings on the KH Keeper. Another area you can see money has been saved is the materials used to build the devices. The KH Keeper is made of acrylic and it's reasonably well put together, but it doesn't have a really solid feeling, unlike the KH Director, which 
is made of aluminium and has a much nicer feel overall. However, one of the downsides of having all this extra kit on the KH Director is that it is quite a lot bigger than the KH Keeper. In fact, I wouldn't mind betting that the KH Director is more than twice the size of the KH Keeper. Now I'll run the numbers and I'll put the size in cubic centimeters down there so you can see how much bigger the KH Director is than the KH Keeper. Now I actually think there's a real benefit in having the smaller size I don't have a massive amount of space in my cupboard and I always found that the KH Director did take up quite a lot of space whereas I've managed to mount the KH Keeper out of the way so it doesn't really take up that much space at all. What about reliability then? Well that's one area that the GHL has nailed down. GHL generally has a really good reputation for reliability whereas Refactory is a pretty new company so it doesn't really have a reputation. That's not to say that it won't be good quality, it's just that you don't know based on years of experience whereas with the KH Director you can be pretty sure that GHL will have put it together quite well. But with that being said the KH Keeper does use Kamoa dosing pumps which are good quality and the KH Director whilst it does have a good reputation I personally have had a couple of issues with the dosing heads that have jammed and needed replacing even in the nine months I've had it. Now that doesn't quite sit with the general reputation of GHL which is for really good quality so I'm probably just about going to give it a pass on that one but in my own personal experience it hasn't actually been that well built in terms of reliability. Another issue in terms of hardware is where you will need to store the wastewater. Both Refactory and GHL advise that you don't return the wastewater with the reagent back to your tank, which means that you need to have a container somewhere to store the reagent. Now the water sample size on the KH Keeper is 60 millilitres or thereabouts, and the GHL you can actually set it yourself. I've set it at 80 millilitres because that's going to give you the highest resolution, but I think you can go down as low as even 20 or 30, and you don't have a massive space for a wastewater sample. The GHL just about has the edge there. But I have seen a number of people who've been running these kind of devices for a couple of years now, and they report that they haven't had any issues with returning the wastewater back to their aquariums. So I am starting to think that perhaps that's the way to go. And that's where the KH Keeper has another advantage. Now, if you Google around enough, you can probably work out what the companies use for the reagents. But if you buy the factory stuff from GHL, it is blue in color. And personally, even though it's only going to be adding small amounts back to your tank, I don't want that blue hue in my water. Whereas the KH Keeper reagent is clear, so it gives me less of a concern. Now, whether a few milliliters of blue colored water is actually going to change your tank, I don't know. It just puts me off a little bit because it is quite a deep blue. The next point in terms of hardware is how long each device takes to complete a test. In my experience, the KH Director takes around 13 minutes and the KH Keeper takes around 18 or 19 minutes. So that is a win for the KH Director. Now the final issue in terms of hardware is the noise each device emits when it's completing a test. Now this is a slightly funny one because the overall noise is slightly louder on the KH Director, but the peak noise is certainly louder on the KH Keeper. And what I mean by that is that the dosing heads that turn to empty the test vial and refill it are a little bit more noisy than those on the KH Keeper, but that being said, they're still really quiet and they shouldn't bother you in your living room when you're watching TV. Then we move on to the stage at which the reagent is added, and that is a big win for the KH Director. Because the reagent is set in small doses, you set the dosing pump to its lowest speed and it is really quiet and you really have to concentrate to listen. However, on the KH Keeper, that is its noisiest part and for 40 seconds whilst it adds the reagent, it does make a bit of a noise and to be honest, if it was testing on the hour every hour, I wouldn't want to have that running whilst I'm in the same room watching TV. With that being said, I'm currently setting mine to test three times a day and it tests when I'm out of the living room, so I don't really hear it. But ultimately, there's no two ways about it. If noise is the most important thing to you, then the KH Director is the way to go. I'm just gonna interrupt the video really quickly because there's one more thing I forgot to add in terms of hardware. With the Refactory KH Keeper, you can see the test sample in a little beaker. You can see exactly how much liquid is in there. Whereas with the KH Director, the test sample is hidden away behind closed doors and you can't see it. Now to be honest, I don't really know what it is about that that makes me feel better, but I think it's probably because you can have a really quick look at the beaker with a KH Keeper and make sure it's using the correct amount of water. It's a small point, but it was something that always bugged me about the KH Director and any time I ran into problems, I always wondered what was going on inside. Anyway, back to the studio. 
So with price and hardware out of the way, it is a win on price for the KH Keeper and just about a win on hardware for the KH Director, although that really depends on what you want. If you want something that's really quiet, the KH Director wins, and if you want something that's smaller, the KH Keeper wins. But I think overall it's probably fair to say that the GHL wins in terms of reputation and reliability. So at one or then we move into the final round, which is software. And I'm gonna tell you straight off the bat that this is a big win for the KH Keeper. First up, let's talk about setup and calibration. Now setting up both of these devices is a little bit of a faff. It does take time and you need to calibrate, then come back probably the next day and recalibrate and maybe repeat the process a couple of times. Calibration is so important for this to get it dialed in and get it as accurate as possible. So for both devices, you do need to invest a little bit of time to get it set up in the first place. With that being said, I personally found setup much easier on the KH Keeper. For a start with the KH Director, I had some serious problems. I couldn't get it to connect to the app, which I'm sure was me doing something wrong, but I just couldn't set it up with the app, which meant I had to bring my computer downstairs, plug it into the TV, and plug it into the KH Director via a USB. It then took me two evenings, a number of hours, and a lot of help from the GHL support forum to get it all working. I just couldn't get it going, it wouldn't connect properly, and when it did, each stage seemed to cause me more and more problems. Now it is of course entirely possible that that was my fault and that I was getting things wrong, but overall the software on the KH Director is much more difficult than the KH Keeper. Connecting to the KH Keeper itself was pretty easy. Now I've already connected two refactory devices, so I kind of knew the score already, but as long as you follow the brief instructions, it's pretty straightforward. But while they are generally pretty similar in terms of setup, when it comes to calibrating, the KH Director does require an extra stage. You have to measure each section of the dosing pipe so that it can calculate exactly how much water it's going to use. And I personally found measuring the dosing pipe to be a complete nightmare. Because it's quite flexible and thin, you need to lay it out on a table and then measure it. But to get it to go straight, you need to pull it. And then it left me wondering, am I stretching it out so it's longer than it actually should be? Now I might have been overthinking it to be fair, but I did find that a little bit of a faff. With a KH Keeper, you don't need to do that. You just prime the device and off it goes. Now I have to say, I do wonder why the KH Director does that and how the KH Keeper can get away without doing that. But both devices give me really accurate results, so I can't really split any. And I can't say that the KH Director gives more accurate results than the KH Keeper. And in fact, that's one thing that's great about both of them. I managed to get them both pretty much spot on relatively easily. Then we go more deeply into the app. Now this is where my personal biases are likely to take over because I just didn't get on with the KH Director app, whereas I really get on with the Refactory app. But I just find the GHL app really complicated. There are tons of menus and the descriptions of what to do aren't really that clear. And I'm gonna digress slightly from the KH Director to give you an example of what I mean. If you are using the GHL temperature controller and you want to set your temperature range from say 24 degrees to 25 degrees, you would think it would be labeled something like temperature range or max and minimum temperature. However, that is not the case and it is labeled hysteresis or hysteresis or however it's pronounced. Now, frankly, I didn't even know what that word meant so I had to look it up. And while that of course relates to the temperature and not the KH director itself, it's a really good example of the kind of clunky and unintuitive language that's used in the KH director app. Whereas in the refactory app, it's really easy. You can figure everything out and it's all more or less on one or two pages. And in fact, that brings me to the other point on the KH director app. There are just so many menus and I found it really difficult to know which one I needed to go into. So I found myself trying not to play around with too many things in case I did something that I couldn't figure out how to undo. Another really good example of the difference is actually connecting to the device. Now with the KH Director, you need to set up individual connections. You can set up a hardwired connection, a wireless connection, and a cloud connection. Now I never quite figured this out properly in the nine months I had it. I always connected via Wi-Fi as my default, but if my Wi-Fi was off on my phone and I wanted to log in, it wouldn't then divert to a cloud connection. I had to log out of the app, log back in, and then tell it to go for a cloud connection, which is all just a bit of a faff. Whereas with the KH Keeper, it doesn't matter if you're connected to Wi-Fi or if you're not. If you are connected to Wi-Fi, it will connect straight away. And if you're not, it will also connect straight away. Now, I don't even know if it's connecting wirelessly directly or via the cloud, 
but it's just really simple and it works without you having to think about anything. And that really is the main difference. What I found with a KH director is that you really have to apply yourself and think quite hard about what you're doing and how to do it. Whereas with the Refactory app, it's just so easy and you can't really go wrong with it. You can teach yourself everything very easily. And for me, that is the way software should be. These are devices that should be working for you rather than the other way around. And I always felt that I had to put a lot more effort into the KH director, which I'm just not prepared to do. And then we come on to graphs. Now I always found the graphs on the KH director to be a little bit clunky. It doesn't give you a list where it writes all the numbers down of your test results. It only gives you a graph that goes up and down and you have to click on each result to see what it was. And then when you click on it, it opens it and gives you the individual result rather than letting you see the graph. So it's a little bit of a faff. Whereas with the KH Keeper, it gives you a really nice graph that shows you up and down over the course of a day, seven days, a month, whatever and it prints a little list of your last 20 results in numbers. And that just makes it so much easier to check in and see how you're getting on. But we haven't even got to the main problem with the KH Director software yet, notifications. With the KH Director, you can't get it to send you notifications if your results fall outside of your desired range. You can tell it that you want your DKH to be, say, between eight and nine, but if it does a test that falls outside of that range, it doesn't tell you and you have to log into the app to find out. Now for me, that is a real flaw with this device. The whole point of it, as far as I'm concerned, is that it just takes care of things and tells me when there's a problem. But actually what I found with the KH Director is that I felt like I needed to log into the app every day just in case something had gone wrong. Whereas the KH Keeper does send you notifications. I have mine set to say the alkalinity should be between eight and nine DKH. And if it falls outside of that range with a test, it sends me a little pop-up notification on my phone, so I know I need to take action. And I have to say, having had the KH Director for almost a year and not having had that, it is a massive relief to get it. You can also set it to give you text message and email alerts if you want, but personally for me, a push notification to my phone is enough. Now I should say that it is possible to get notifications of sorts with the KH Director, but in order to do that, you need to buy the Aquarium controller, the Profilux 4. Now I'm not completely sure of the prices, but I believe they range between four or 600 pounds all the way to 800 pounds for the Aquarium controller. And whilst you get all sorts of other fancy things for that, if you want to get notifications, you have to buy the controller. And even then, it won't send you proper notifications, it will only send you emails. As far as I'm concerned, I get dozens of emails per day, and if my phone beeps and it's got an email, I don't instantly think I need to look at that. So if I was getting email notifications from the cage director, it would make me paranoid and think I need to check every time I get an email. And as far as I'm concerned, notifications is a deal breaker. GHL say they are working on notifications, but until they implement them, personally, I don't think it's a viable option for me. And there is one more feature that the KH Keeper has that the KH Director doesn't. If when the KH Keeper runs a test, it gives you a result that is unusual, it will retest again. And you set the parameters to tell it when to do so. With me, I've set it so it will do a retest if there is a difference of 0.4 DKH between two test results. Whereas the KH Director doesn't do that. So if it gets an unusual result, it doesn't do anything about it. And of course, it doesn't even notify you to tell you there might be something wrong. So rounding up the scores then, we have a win for the KH Keeper by two to one. It is cheaper and the software is leagues above the KH Director, but the KH Director does just about win in terms of reliability based on its reputation that it's built over years and build quality of the hardware. Although with that being said, it is quite big. So if size is important to you, the KH Keeper is the way to go. And really for me, the only thing that the KH Director really wins on is noise because it is really quiet. So if sound is the most important thing to you, get the KH Director, but otherwise you are far better off, in my opinion, going with the KH Keeper. With all that being said though, the purpose of this video isn't really to tell you which is better, it's to give you all the information that you need about both of them so you can make up your own mind. And you should bear in mind that I had a bit of a love-hate relationship with the KH Director in the nine months I had it, so I don't mind saying I'm probably slightly biased against it. Now, if you've got either of these devices, I'd be really interested to hear what you think about them. I'd be particularly interested to hear from experienced GHL users who I suspect might get on a little bit better with the KH Director. So let me know in the comments section below what you guys think. And if you enjoy the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next week. And until next time, happy reefing.